Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. If you are happy to be in God's presence this morning, can you shout hallelujah? A long awaited something happened yesterday and God took control. I want us to be on our feet and appreciate God. Let's appreciate him. It was very surprised. Everything went peacefully. The God of Christians showed up. Despite different prophecies, different revelations that have been seen, the Lord took control. And let us pray that God, the many ones, God will perfect it. The announcement and the gubernatorial that is coming up next two weeks, the Lord will perfect it also. That that one will be more peaceful than the one that was aired yesterday. In Jesus' mighty name, we prayed. Amen. Let's be on. Let's be seated. It's a great opportunity to be in His presence this morning once again. To hear at His feet. I pray. We will not just be the hearer of the word, but also the doer in the name of Jesus. Lesson 599. Israel renews covenant with God. Israel is Israel renews covenant with God. Israel is Our memory verse. Who can recite the memory verse for us? Joshua 24 24. Hey, Katon. you Thank you, ma. Can someone else? Okay. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God will be served, and his word will be hear. Joshua 24, 24. His voice will obey. Joshua 24, 24. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and his voice we will obey. And when you not see before Joshua, you will not see before Joshua, you will not see before Joshua. Is that your own confession this morning? That you are telling Prophet Omolewa that I, so 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 person, I said to Prophet Omolewa that the Lord my God I will serve and his voice will I obey. We if pray. you are such a person, can you shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. So by then, you know, so they don't want to bang back from Baba, and you know, we pay. I pray such will not just be ordinary confession, but it will be a things of daily action in our life in Jesus' name. A fast reader should read Joshua chapter 24, 1 to 15. A fast reader, please. And Joshua gathered. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem's and called for the elders of Israel and for all. 
their elders and for their judge, judges and for their officers and they are, and, and they presented themselves before God and Joshua said unto all the people thou say the Lord God of Israel your father dwelleth on the other side of the flood in old time and Terah and the father of Abraham and the father of Nacho and and they serve other gods and I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac and I gave unto Isaac Jacob and Esau and I gave unto Esau Montzir to possess it but, Josh, and, but Jacob, uh, Jacob and his children went down into Egypt I sent Moses and also and Aaron and I purged Egypt according to that which I said did among them and afterward I brought you out and I brought your father out of Egypt and ye came unto the sea and the Egyptian pursued after your father with with chariots and horsemen unto the Red Sea and when they cried unto the Lord he put darkness between you and the Egyptian and brought the sea unto them and covered them and and your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt and he dwelt in the wilderness a long season and I brought you into the land of the Amorites which dwells on the other side Jordan and they fought and they fought with you and I gave them into your hand that he might possess their land and I destroyed them from before you and Balak the sons of Vipon king of Am Moab arose and worried against Israel and sent and called Balaam the sons of Baal to curse you, but I would not hearken unto Balaam. Therefore, he blessed you still. So I deliver you out of his hand. I said to 15. But, okay, and you went out, and you went over Jordan and came unto Jericho. And the men of Jericho fought against you. The Amorites and the Parasites, and the Canaanites and the Etats, and the, and the Gagiats, and the Evites, and the Jebusites. And I delivered them into your hand. And I sent the hornets before you, which drove them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword, nor with thy bow. And I have given you a land for which ye did not labor, and city which ye built not, and ye dwell in them, of the vineyard and olive yard, which ye planted not, do you eat. Now, therefore, fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity, and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seems even unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whom land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's God. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. We can see the leadership role of Joshua. Joshua In Joshua chapter 23. You know someone all the head, judges and officers. He told them that I am getting old. And at any time I can go. And he begins to admonish them. Telling them the faithfulness of God. And their role to play it. And he now continuing again in Joshua chapter 24. He begins to recount what God has done for them. Right from Abraham. How God called Abraham out of the land of Shadish. The, the promise he gave to Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. And he gave them the instances also what happened in the land of Egypt. How God delivered them from the hand of Pharaoh. And he continued to say when they get to the promised land, how God gave them the house they did not build. 
bi olodun gba ti won tun won de ile leri bi olodun se ko ile fun won to si bere si ni fun won ni ile ti ki se ti won what they did not labor for how god gave to them and he started recounting the goodness of God for the children of Israel. And he said, after all these things that I have told you, in verse 14 of Joshua 24, say now, therefore, serve the Lord in fear and in sincerity. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth. See, as a result of all these things that God has done for you, we all know that in English, whenever I say therefore, that is something that has gone before, before the therefore. Say, after all these things that God has done for you as children of Israel, the only thing you can do for him is to fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And also to us today, everything that God has done for us, he sent his son Jesus Christ to die for our sin. We are not worthy to be at the presence of God. But because of his son Jesus Christ, he made us worthy. And there is only one thing you and I can do is to fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. I pray that act God will give unto us in Jesus' name. We will not serve God with pretense in the name of Jesus. Joshua recant God's goodness to Israel. Joshua shall I your Lord for Israel? Someone should open to Psalm 77, verse 11. Here, Nicoco, she will read that for this 77 and say, Cocola, eh, Tadini, or God, or Gorin. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember the wonders of old. A psalmist was saying, I will remember the works of God. Surely I will remember the wonders of old. Is anybody in our midst this morning that God has not done something wonderful for? Right from your day of birth now. Can you shout hallelujah? Being alive this morning is not by your power. If there is nothing you can look in your life and give thanks to, but being alive is worth giving thanks to. And you can walk, you can see, you can eat, and you can talk. This is a great thing. And Joshua is admonishing you and I this morning. Now, when you recount God's goodness in your life, you have the cause to thank Him. The assembly Joshua addressed here was the same as in the previous chapter. The meeting aired in Shechem probably because it was nearer to Joshua than Shiloh. Because Joshua is aging. He cannot walk like youth before. In, instead of the meeting to be held in Shiloh, he decided to head to take place in Shechem. And Shechem was the place also that God made a covenant with Abraham. 
When God called Abraham from his father's house in Genesis chapter 12, it was also a place that is near Gerizim and Eba. I pray this morning that our Sheshem we will continue to renew the covenant in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It is the duty of God to make a covenant to someone that works with God. If a man works with God genuinely, such a man will receive covenant from God. Let's look at Genesis chapter 17. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be that perfect, and I will make my covenant. Between me and thee. I'm telling us. I'm telling us this morning. A man that walk with God, automatically God will make covenant with such a man. Some people say, ah, my, Our father in the law used to say, God has made a covenant with me. Ah, here am I have worked with God. God has not made covenant with you. May I tell you this morning that you have not walked the way God promised you to walk? I remember this year. That is January 2nd. God, God said I should do something last year. And I did it. At the end of that thing. When I was praying, said, Son, I have made a covenant of so, 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 so with you. And I was happy. I said, Is God, is it God that is talking? Ah, I jump up. And when I said, Open to James chapter 4, James chapter 4. And when I read that place, he directed me. He's talking about pride. He said, Because I made a covenant with you, that does not make you boast yourself, humble yourself. That was when I knew that when a man walked with God, and where you are obedient to him. Normally, we will come and make a covenant with you. And he will tell you the, 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 the conditions that will make the covenant to continue to work. And the condition he gave to me said I should humble myself. If I should raise myself up, are broken the terms of the covenant. Covenant is a normal thing for a Christian that work with God. It's not something when you just work with God normally, God will come and make covenant with you. He said, he said work before me and be that perfect and I will make a covenant with you. The only condition he gave to him said, Walk before me and be that part. And conjunction. And after you have done this, I will make a covenant with you. I heard of a man of God that said, God made a covenant of earth with him. Say since 1990 something till now, he has not taken paracetamol or tablet. Because he walked with God. I pray 
the grace to walk with God this morning. The Lord will give unto us in Jesus' name. Amen. Put away the strange gods. Either is the advice Joshua is giving to them. Is there any strange God in our life? Is, you know, when I mean strange God, it's not where you go and bow down. No. Anything that takes the place of God in your heart is a strange God. Is it money that you cannot, is it money that you take more than God? Some people is their immorality. Some people is worldliness. Some people is conversiousness. Some people there are many things like that. Some people is because of their their intellect. They are brilliant. Whatever things that you put before God is a strange God. And that aspect is where God used to come and test us. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Question theory. Why did Joshua? Sorry, question two. Okay, question one, sorry. Enumerate God's kindness to Israel as recounted by Joshua. <laughs> Let's make it fast. <laughs> Let's enumerate. The word enumerate is less list. <laughs> the goodness of God <laughs> to children of Israel. We want our hands up because of time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. O Damani Day, Crone Rigby from our LGBT. He delivered them from the bondage of the Egyptian. O Kole from one life, he was Halara. He be the house for them without any stress. Give my brother at the front. Any of my any of them at the front. Bro Emmanuel. If I know our name, I will call us by name. If you are not answering. He recounted the story of how God brought Abraham out of the land of Chaldea. He reminded them of how he gave Isaac to Abraham. He reminded them of how he gave Esau and, J and uh, Jacob to Isaac. He also reminded them of their deliverance from Egyptian bondage. He reminded them of God's protection on their lives while they traveled throughout the wilderness. He reminded them of the plot of Balaam and Balak. Thank you, sir. He also made them landlords of a good place which other people labored to build. Also, I want the only lady to see what she said. I want me to call. How will you feel when God make you a landlord and you are not the one that build the house? Who, who, who wants such thing? Can you shout hallelujah? I remember in my university days. I was praying one day. And God said, said, you will lay, you will sow, you will reap where you have not labored. And I said, God, is it possible? I searched my Bible. Ah, when I searched, I said, that's what this is biblical. And today, the word came to pass in my life. Most of the things I have. I didn't buy it. The house I was living, I was giving. Most of the things I have was, I said, God, it shows you are a faithful God. I prayed this morning. Such grace will enter into everyone that desire it and walk with God in the name of Jesus. Amen.
It's very, very possible. Joshua recanted many things. Many things that God has done for the children of Israel. Right from Abraham to the present moment they are. The same thing in your own life. When you look deep, you know God has done something great for you. Where you are, can you say thank you, Jesus? Can you say thank you, Jesus? Joshua charged to Israel to serve God. After they've recounted the goodness of God for them, Joshua said, okay, what is your own part? Your own part is to fear God and serve God in sincerity and in truth. Now we have seen that God has been faithful. What is that that you and I must do? To tell this God, thank you for your faithfulness. And one of them is to fear God. When a man fear God, when I read the book of Proverbs recently, I knew that the fear of God is a very tangible thing that must be in the life of a person. I don't know when I started praying for the spirit of fear of God to come upon my life. But if this is in the life of someone, you will hate evil. You will be, you will be, you will be rich. There is nothing that you need that will not come to you. The fear of God. I pray it will be in our lives in the name of Jesus. To fear God in whatever we are doing. In your daily activities, in your secret place, to fear him. Say the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Said the fear of God tends to life. He tends to life. If a man that fear God hate evil, pride, arrogancy, and every every evil works. The problem we are having in our in this pre, in this present world is lack of the fear of God. The purpose of relating the history of God's message to the children of Israel was to exhort them to fear and serve God in gratitude for his favor so that they might continue to enjoy the same. After he recanted, in verse 14, he said, Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him. In sincerity and in truth. And we saw what happened in Isaiah. When God was recant, he said, and, this, and the spirit of the Lord shall be upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of God. He was referring to Jesus Christ from that particular scripture. One of the spirit that Jesus Christ had is the spirit of the fear of God. It's a great spirit that every Christian needs to pray for. Question 2. Why was Israel charged to fear and serve the Lord? Let's come to the choir, my brother. To the choir stand. You can give to any of the youth. 
If they want to collect it, I will mention their name. Okay, it's the Bura. They were charged to serve God because it was God that has been helping them, and it was the one that brought them out of the land of um, Egypt. So they are charged to serve God. Put it, give it to my sister beside you. Start up where? Because God is a fearful God, and whoever that wants to serve Him should serve Him in truth and in spirit because He's a mighty God. He's mightier than the other gods that they've served in the past. Because God is great and powerful, so they were to fear Him. Praise God. We must fear God because of his greatness. Because of his power. Authority and majesty. He can never be compared with any other God. You must fear him because of his greatness. Some of us, when you have a father that is very tough, when you see the father from afar and you are here, you run because okay, that was the way I was brought up. I see my dad like this from afar and I'm playing ball. The ball at me, we don't know, everybody will just run. We say, why? But my dad must not meet me there because if he meet me there, he go, he go, he will not, it doesn't bring your head. Paka. And because of that, anytime I see him like this, I used to run away. You give me a knock on my head. We must fear God because He's a great God. God has the power to kill and to make alive. We must fear Him above any other thing. There's some of us here, we fear man more than God. Uh, I pray God will not dis displace his rot in your life in the name of Jesus. I've witnessed it before. That is why I don't allow any things between him and him. He, uh, uh, God sometimes, he can remove someone's eyes if the person fail to obey him. I remember a man that God called. He said, ah, said ah, God, I can't listen to you. I can't. I'm a, I think he's a medical doctor, a professor. He said, no, God, let me work. Guess, okay, no, no, but no problem. You can go on. Okay, no problem, you can go. He had an accident. The hand was amputated. And, go, and he heard a voice. Do you still want to walk? Or you will answer me. Nobody told him. He volunteered completely. That is the extent God can go in the life of a man when you fail to listen to him. I pray we will not get to such thing in our life in the name of Jesus. You will obey him in quickly in the name of Jesus. Let the habitant of heaven and earth hear and fear God who can do all things. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. When you say you fear God and you are still practicing evil, you don't fear God. When you say you fear God, you are still committing adultery, you don't fear God. Someone that knows the truth 
and he failed to act on the truth, God will surely discipline that person. We can see the case of David. He has worked with God. He knows that adultery is not good. But when he did it with Beersheba, the child died. And God said, because of that, sword shall never depart from your household. There are some of us say we are the one bringing cause to our family. Because of our doings. Because of our doings, we are bringing cause. I pray this morning. In any way, we have been bringing cause to our family ignorantly. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. How else can a man prove that he fear God if not by serving, by diligent service? Serving God includes doing His will and working for Him. A man that loves God, that fear God, will serve God. You will serve Him diligently. And you will do His will. You will do his will. Whatever thing God ate, you will eat it. Whatever thing God does not like, you too will not like. This is a sign that such a person fear God. It's a sign that such a person is doing the will of God. I pray that act God will give unto us in Jesus' name. In book of Proverbs, I think Proverbs chapter 16. Say, my son, give me the act and let the eyes observe my ways. God is requiring our heart from every one of us sitting here. He's asking for our heart. Give God your heart. Give him everything that pertains to you. And let your, your own eyes observe his ways. Let your hand do what God requires. Let your leg go to where God will go. Let your mouth speak what God wants you to speak. Not gossip. Not malice. Not forward mouth. Not perverse lips. Let everything about you be for God. Your eyes, let it look what God will look. There was a time God said to say some people, they usually have bad things in their life because of what they look. Ah, and that was when I knew that in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. He said, guide your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. And, and when you go down, you see that there are some openings to your heart. Your eyes, what your eyes look at can affect your heart. What your ear, yes, yes, can affect your heart. What your mind is meditating on can affect your heart. I pray. Some, Some of us here that we are still watching pornography. Watching films that does not edify. 
Washing all this in Hollywood, that at the end of everything, it will even add to problem. I pray this morning God will deliver us in Jesus' name. Because it has spiritual implication. When you are doing all these things, you are not serving God right. You are not serving God right because you are not doing His will. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. The greatest service we can render to him today is to make his truth known to others, both by our life as well as our lives. Our lives and our lives. And that aspect today, let's say the truth, in the body of Christ is lacking no. You see some people they say I'm a pastor and he's, and he's committing fraud. You see some people I'm a pastor. You are living in a tenant place for a good three years. You have not paid your rent. You said you are a pastor. And when they ask you say I'm a pastor and you are, it doesn't mean that you should not pay your rent. Some they will not even go and meet the landlord. They will not go and meet the landlady. They will just continue to stay. They won't tell the reason what happened, why they are staying there. And every day, the name of God is being blasphemed as a result of us. When Nathan came to David, he said, as a result of you, the name of the Lord has been reproached. The same thing in Romans chapter 2, when Paul was talking to the people of Romans. Said as a result of you, Romans, the name of God has been blasphemed. There are some people, because of your behavior, some people have vowed that they will not give their life to Christ. They said, because of you, if it is your only show, show I will never become a Christian. You have become a stumbling block to some to others that should give their life to Christ. Search your, search your life, search deeply. Is there any way I have become a stumbling block? She calls herself a child of God and she normally calls. Long, keep malice in the, oh, if you move it, it's a busy body, no busy body, jumping from one own room to the other, gossiping. I remember when, when my former church, my pastor would say, but I would, today we are going to your area for evangelism. Anytime we tell some brothers and sisters, today we are going to your place. Next week is your area we are going. Some of them will not come to, to for evangelism that week. They know the kind of life they are living because we are, we are going to push you forward. You are the one that is going to lead us. You will be the one that will preach you so that we will know the way you are in your street. In your house, you even go to your house, you'll be the one to live so that we can know the. And since I've been observing it, they will run away, they will not come for that week. Can such a thing happen in your own life too? That when we are going for evangelism, when we get to your street or when we get to your house, say, We are brother, sister, lead. Can you be bold enough to preach the gospel of Christ? I pray this morning if there's any of us that is guilty in that area God will help us in Jesus name if you don't stop 
you will give account. People that Christ died for, you are the one injuring them from accepting Christ. I pray on that day, you not be a cast away in Jesus' name. Question three. Why did Joshua leave the choice of faith to the people to decide? Why did Joshua allow them to make decision for themselves? Like the way we are doing this morning, we are just telling you, we didn't force you. And why did Joshua did not say, yeah, you come out, you must do this, you come out. But he gave them the choice to decide for themselves. Yeah, we are waiting. Give it to our mothers and our fathers. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He want them to decide on their own whom they want to worship or serve. It was a time for decision making. My brother, among the choristers, because he will not force anyone against their will. He will not force anyone against his will. The same thing to God. God will not force you. After you have even given your life to Christ, it will even come some time to come and give you choice. Say, son, this is what I want. Do it. And if you decide not to do it, no problem. God is not a God that falls something on someone. The only person that falls something on someone is Satan. When you are already in their group, they say, give your son. Give your daughter. Whether you agree or not, they will be. But in God's kingdom, God gave every man choice. Salvation, God gave you choice. After you have given their life, given your life to Christ, even give you choice. But this morning, which side will you follow? Are we going to obey God completely? If you are going to obey God completely, can we shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. I mean obey God completely. Half obedience is starter month to disobedience. And the scripture says in the book of James. Say, in that offend in one, he has broken all. A man that is contented, but is committing adultery, he has broken all. A man that does not commit adultery, but is full of conversiousness. When God comes, because of that art in you, at as spoiled everything. Say, a little forces spoiled the old van. Some say, but the anger in your life, when you start, you can break everything down. This morning, God is telling every one of us, including me, for complete obedience. Obedience on every side. I pray this morning, God will help us in Jesus' name. I remember a man of God said something. 
said when he looked at his life, he noticed some things that he does not like. He listed everything out. Anger, everything that he does not want that is in his life, he wrote it there. See, every day when he comes to the presence of God, so, Oluwa, this thing that is in my life, take it away. He prayed for years. And a time came in his life, he could not see such thing again. And if I should mention the name of the man, that is Zike Ulukoya, and he's a great man today. He listed everything out. And he started praying. And today, to God be the glory, he said such thing cannot be seen in his life again. And we can see what God is doing in his life. The same thing to us also. That anger in you. Is there any step you are taking. Some say it's ah, hereditary. My the, the the anger of my mom is even higher than my own. Hello, me. Are you paying my job? Company. If you know, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do so well. God will ask you. He will tell you that there is a power in your life that is higher that can destroy every anger in you. But because you fail to walk with that power, God will ask you. God will ask us. I say, ah, I'm lost. It's lost. God will ask you. My body is to shake when I see women. God will say, some people are even worse than you, and I deliver them. Every day they are sleeping with someone two, two hours, three, three hours, and today I deliver them completely. But today there is no any excuse. Oh man, that are inexcusable. You, do, you have no excuse. Oh, near in the presence of God, there is no excuse. Because when you come out, someone greater than you will come out. You say, ah, God, a moment to fool me, You say, ah, uh, maybe because of the four children that you gave me. And thirteen, someone that had thirteen children will come out. Ah, and it's only a moment, Salah will not come out. Say, me no moment, Salah, and I still serve God. I have thirteen children, and they did not hinder me from serving the Lord. I have nineteen children, and I serve God. I say my husband is an unbeliever. Someone that the husband is an occultic man that used to kill someone every month will come out. Let me tell every one of us, including me, nobody has no excuse. God will help us in Jesus' name. Question four. What lesson do we learn from Joshua's declaration to serve God with his house? What lesson do we learn from Joshua's declaration to serve God with his house? Let's raise our The declaration of Joshua is, as for me and my family, we serve the Lord. So also myself, as for me and my family, we serve the Lord to the end. Give, give it to one of our fathers. For Joshua is a man. Let's be sincere, my brother. Let me, my brother, don't give it out first. If you are here... And you have not been practicing what Joshua said today. Don't raise your hand up. But if you are doing it, raise your hand up and answer the question. Ah, how many? Just two hands. 
Let's be sincere. Don't lie in the presence of God. You are in the presence of God. Thank God this morning. It's a period of decision. Oh. If you have not been doing it, I know this is not the first time we are treating this thing. This is the second time. So, some of us, we didn't work on it. Because I expect every, all the men to raise their own hand up. Maybe they didn't hear what I'm saying. If you are here as a man in our midst, you have made decisions for yourself and for your family. That all of you who serve the Lord, can you raise your hand up? Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. My brother, I give it to one of them. Please, some of us that have not made decision, God will help us to make such decision and act on it in Jesus' name. Leadership by example, Joshua life. Leadership by example, Joshua life. Big big by ya dari ni pa pere tabi a wokoshe le tari noye a Joshua. What else again? I never fathers. Koko mi wola sunri ni be. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Joshua kufa isile la ti je ki onko kodi onlo wola ti si olorun. La ti si olorun. Joshua did not allow any hindrances to hinder him from serving the Lord. We see that um, serving God is not optional. Serving God is not optional. Joshua led by example. He's doing it and he wants others also to do it. In a family that the father is not doing what God wants, no matter how you preach that, oh yeah, my Lord, shush, do this, let me tell you, they will not follow. Because anointing flows from the head. And when you are promiscuous as a father, very soon you see your children exhibiting such things. That is why they used to say that when you see a pastor or a prophet that have a particular sin in his life and he's not working towards it, it's a matter of time. The members will start doing what is in the life of that pastor. Because the worst thing about it is that the, the, the members will amplify it more than what he is doing. Oh, I'm going to I want more. Jog on what my shade do. No, 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 to uh, to commit adultery, the children and when you commit adultery, they be having they be having children outside. Ah, uh, teba riba ba to je pe on she pan shaga nita. His children will not only do adultery, but they will bear children outside their they, matrimonial home because they will magnify the sin. The next generation coming will magnify the sin. Ah, uh, when not on board, let him baba he. I want to ask you, she ila ruge just be baba she belo. The same thing in the congregation. I don't need to mention some names of some pastors that are committing, especially the sin of adultery. Look at their congregation. Their own congregation will even be worse than the pastor. The same thing as a father. As a mother, if there's anything in your life that you are not consciously working upon, it's a matter of time. It will come out from your children. 
and they will magnify it. I pray this morning the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Whatever thing that is in our life that the devil is also using as an acquisition upon our children the Lord will help us this morning to turn around for good in the name of Jesus. That art that we hear and do God will give unto us in Jesus' name. Fine. Maybe you are saying that I have not gotten any experience. I'm too small. But God can use a babe to speak to someone. That does not know anything. But the grace to hear and do. God will give unto every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Question. Okay, we have. Okay. I pray this morning also as a father you make decision for your asshole to serve the Lord in Jesus name. If I are a mother here and your, and, your, and your husband is not yet born again there is no problem. Is there anything difficult for God to do? I heard of a woman that prayed for 40 years for, a, for her husband. After 40 years, the man gave his life to Christ. And some weeks after the man gave his life to Christ, the man died. The man died. And the woman was happy that, thank God, my husband was able to reign with God. We might be in that same shoe today. Your children might not know God. Your father, maybe you are a shy dear. Your father, you are, you are a shy dear. Your father does not know God. Whatever might be your own condition this morning, I have a God that there is nothing difficult for him to do. I did it for my parents. Today, my mom is going to see a now. I said, God, these people will never die until they give their life to you. And I pray through. I pray through. I pray, prayed until I had witness in my heart that I had prayed through. And today, when I see them, I'm happy. The same thing to you and everyone sitting here. Your husband, your wife, your mother, your father, Baba, they might not have known God. But because you have the opportunity to know God, you are privileged to know God. Let's continue to intercede for them. And let our behavior preach Christ. Some of us, yeah, our husband will have given their life to Christ because the way you behave at home, you nag. Our father told us a story of a woman. The woman, thank God, she knew Christ. But the husband does not know God. Whenever she went out to preach or to greet someone, the husband would lock everywhere. The woman would sleep outside. The next day, whenever the husband opened the door, she would not say, she said, Darling, how are you? What are you going to eat? Should I prepare this? Should I prepare that? For years, the husband has been doing it. And the woman has been responding in a godly way. 
One day the husband forgot to lock the kitchen door. And the, the wife knocked the other that was locked. She entered through the kitchen door. And when she opened the kitchen door, she was surprised. She entered. She tapped the husband. She entered. She tapped the husband. Darling, I thank you. You opened the kitchen door for me. Ah, how did you enter? It was through the kitchen door. Maybe you are the one that opened it for me. And the husband laughed. Say, ah, what is in your hand? He said his Bible. Say tomorrow, buy new Bible for me. And as a result of that, the husband gave his life to Christ. Can you see what your lips? Your character can go a long way in winning your partner, in winning people of your household to God. Not only praying. Not only praying. Not only preaching. Bear your character. Let's join our feet. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's go before the Lord this morning. Let's go before the Lord this morning. Is there any way the Lord has spoken to you this morning? I want you to pray to God that God should help you. Holy Spirit should help you as husband. In any way, you have not been protruding a, a good example in the family. And as a mother, as children here also, I want you to pray to God to help you. There is another chance for everyone here. There is another chance. There is another chance. There is another chance. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We are grateful unto you for this opportunity and privilege given unto us to gather together your presence. Father, accept our praises in Jesus' name. You have taught us again this morning. And I pray that the grace Heavenly Father, to be the doers of all these teachings, give and grant unto us in Jesus' name. I pray that on that day, none of these teachings will witness against us in Jesus' name. As we continue in the service, continue with us. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray.